So we have a mold here uh, for making brown wax cylinder records. This is the outer jacket or tube. Uh, it's made out of steel dome tubing and it's bored out to 2.3 inches. This is the center core of the mold. It unscrews from the base. So we have a riser in the base and then a spiral mold. Uh, there's some interesting things. This is the only spiral core mold in use right now in the manufacture of cylinder records. And it also is the same way that cylinder record molds were made are very, very similar. We actually don't know what they look like because there's none that exist. To my knowledge, there are no original brown wax cylinder molds that actually exist today from the 19th century. So this is, it works. If you notice that it is uh, over six inches long, the core, to compensate any difference in shrinkage that may happen in making the cylinder records from uh, compound to compound, there might be a slight change in shrinkage. It is about 2% from when you pour the record to when it cools to room temperature, the difference in the shrinkage. If you use a regular phonograph mandrel for actual real metallic soap, it will not work at all. You will become without, you will have to ream the cylinder so much that uh, you will have a thin uh, record that uh, only will have a couple shaves in it before it's useless. This allows the good wax to be in the middle of the pour or in the middle of the thickness of the cylinder rather than near the outside because near the very inside and very outside of your rough casting is not so good surface. So you need to shave into the cylinder to get to the good metallic soap. So that is some interesting particulars about this mold. So we have here a mold in the oven that we heat the mold at 300 degrees for one hour. To do this is important as it lets the wax slowly cool. Never force cool cylinder record compound. The more you force it, the worse bubbles could be, stars, streaks, dendrites, and other defects. So slow cooling is the key to making great blanks. So what you see here is known as brown wax that we are heating up. This is original Edison brown wax dating from around 1900 to 1898 in there. Some collectors sent me some broken cylinders that were smashed beyond usability. So I have remelted them down, added 1% bovine-based steric acid to freshen up the wax, and we are going to recast a new blank out of it. So we have to wait until the mold is ready. We heat the mold for one hour at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so uh, we have our wax up to 410 degrees, which is our molding temperature. So we will be getting the mold out of the oven slightly, just to, enough to uh, to pour the wax in the mold. It's pretty hot, so. So we're gonna pour into the mold the 410 degree wax. We have, of course, there is our thermometer. And so, uh, our strainer. This is original Edison brown wax. We want to pour it in slowly. Yeah. 
and overflow the wax at the end. So we have a full pour, which is really good. So that is our original brown wax in the mold. So we have our wax back in the oven after we have molded it, and we are putting it in the oven for 15 more minutes with heat on. Then we will turn off the heat. So you hear the beeping sound? That means that we're going to have to shut the heat off of the oven. And then we will set the timer for 90 minutes of uh, cooling time for the mold. So the timer went off and the mold has been in the oven for 90 minutes without being disturbed. Now it should be hard enough to retain its shape. I don't know. I haven't opened the oven to check on it, so we will see what we have. Let's see where we're at. So this is original wax in the mold. So we're going to demold it. You can tell the wax is still quite hot yet. But the 90 minutes have gone by. So we need to remove the bottom of the mold. got plenty of time because the mold is still nice and hot. The wax is hard enough to retain its shape. However, it's still pliable. Well, the hardest thing sometimes is actually getting the base of the mold off. It likes to get stuck. So we're trying to uh, extract the... Uh, sometimes you got to put it down on your feet to get it. we got plenty of time. Try tapping it. It seems like it's kind of stuck. The... And these are real things that happen. So we got something here to tap the base here. So what you see here is the outer tube of our casting. Remember, this casting is made with original Edison wax from about 1898. These are made from broken records that uh, you couldn't put back together because they were so bad. So we have reintroduced uh, them as a new blank. So we are now uh, have inserted, we now have inserted a wooden mandrel into the center of the blank. And after a while, the outer mold tube will fall off and we will have then our rough casting. Thank you. So, so this is a uh, the casting that came out of the tube. This is the uh, mold casing or tube, the outer tube, outer casing, whatever you want to call it. 
This is the rough casting made with original Thomas A. Edison National Phonograph Company wax from circa 1898. So we have it on the wooden core. We'll leave it on there for a little bit. This is to prevent warpage. Uh, it also reams it to a size uh, that will be useful. But as you can tell, in all essence, this blank turned out very, very nice. So uh, we'll have another video at a later time showing the machining of this probably tomorrow because we like to let these sit oh about a day to properly settle they need to settle to be right so um this is the casting now and we will remove it from the wooden core now the spiral wasn't as good as i like it however it's there and the record should actually fit very nicely. So this is a rough casting made with original Edison brown wax from about 1898. I wanna mention really quick about our new microphone that we are doing our videos with. This is the Blue Yeti microphone, a very popular microphone with video casting. And we have it set in stereophonic mode. I personally like the sound of it. It has a very nice, clean, clear sound. And we are using it here at North American Phonograph Company. So this is Sean Borey signing off here at the North American Phonograph Company. We'll have another video on the machining of the blank after tomorrow.